Hey friends, this is B.Belly from the Prophetic Remnant. I'm going to give everyone a few seconds to tune in. I've got about 20 minutes and I want to talk about um, the post that I've um, put about witchcraft um, and the group. So this is for all my Prophetic Remnant group members. Come on in the room. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Hey, hey, hey. Um, I'm not near a computer, so I can't log on to see if whether or not I can be heard or seen properly. So if I can, someone put it in the chat. Say, hey, someone to speak to me and say, hey, so that I know. This is a beautiful Friday. God is doing amazing things. I have a new vigor and passion for um, just even in the little things. Um for the kingdom sorry hey 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 okay thank you i see my haze all right so the topic for today um per the post was witchcraft and i am strategically asking these questions and putting these symptoms um within the group as well as um getting everyone to chime in for strategies on how to defeat witchcraft because we're not just going to stop at the attack we're going to talk about the solution for a reason and for a purpose. Um, a lot of your warfare right now is because of witches. It's because of witchcraft. Even people who don't think that they're witches, but they're praying against the will of God for your life, that's witchcraft. And those are darts that are, be, that are being sent your way. Um, and I wanted you guys to be able to see the symptoms so that you can identify what's really been going on in your life. When I first came in contact with the fact that someone was sending a witchcraft attack against me, uh, the church wasn't talking about it. So I literally had to do my own research and stumble upon, in a Google search, um, different symptoms that would give way that you were under a witchcraft attack. Uh, whether it was the heavy bleeding, whether it was car crashes, I was dealing with pretty much all of that. Um, and uh, because the church wasn't teaching about it, um, I didn't know too much about it. I didn't I didn't know what was going on, how to handle it. Um the weapons of my warfare, so on and so forth. So that is why I did the post. I'm telling y'all now, for where you are, look at that list and add to the list if you haven't already. Because if your symptoms are lining up, I can 10 out of 10 tell you right now that there's a witch assigned to you. See, just like we have intercessory prayer, just like uh, we have our own assignments, there are assignments from the kingdom of darkness for their agents, right? For those who submit under those spirits, okay? And the same way we can be in prayer and God will give us a name or he will assign us to pray for somebody. It's the same way in the kingdom of darkness, they assign individuals, human beings, to pray against you because there is power in prayer. Uh-oh. It doesn't just stop at the kingdom of God. Power is power, okay? We just understand that we are submitted to the one who has all power. But the issue is that there are a lot of people who claim Christ and that are in church that don't understand the power of God, how it works, how it works in their life and through them, as well as the fact that, yeah, we talk about we got all power, but are you operating in it? What do you do when you come up against an individual that you are on the same power level? Have you tapped in on that next level or are you just content where you are? So these are conversations within the body that we have to have because there is a lot of there are a lot of individuals right now sick in your body, hearing voices in your mind. They're telling you that you're going through mental illness this and, third, and it's literally a witchcraft attack. And because you may not have been taught, because you may not have heard, because you might not even really believe that it's true, you you brush it off. OK, you say, oh, well, Jesus died on the cross for my sins, but yet you're still suffering. Uh Oh, y'all know I'm going to be very blunt and very honest. The cross, the work of the cross gives you access to the weapons of your warfare. But if you don't know what those weapons are, if you don't know what's in the covenant, if you don't know to the full extent what Christ did on that cross, you're going to find yourself like a lot of folks that we're seeing right now, still living a defeated lifestyle, still living with the illness in their body, still living with delay in their life, still living, hallelujah, on the wrong side of breakthrough. So I want you to go to the post. 
I want you to look at what's been listed as symptoms, okay? And if you can identify that there is witchcraft going on in your life, I need you to develop a strategy. Now, how do you develop a strategy? See, this is a little brief teaching for um Facebook, but this is stuff that within the ministry, offline, we talk about more because I'm not giving these witches all the information so that they can now go and try to find something to combat it. But I can give you ground level, base level, Number one, you've really got to be in relationship. A curse causeless cannot come. If you are not truly saved, I need you to hear me. If you live in a lukewarm life, if you know that there are areas in your life that you are consistently sinning and you're not repentant, then guess what? Then that curse has a reason and a cause to come. So if you're dealing with that uh, witchcraft attack, if, if it's able to manifest in your life, then you have work to do. You need to get saved for real. And saved for real does not just stop at believing because we talked about how even the demons believe no you have to repent you have to confess you have to uh receive the holy ghost and baptism we need you saved for real we don't need you saved for fake okay next is your obedience if you know that you have met all those qualifications are you being obedient to the word of god are you keeping his commandments i know that they will have you to think that you know the law and all of that stuff is obsolete but no the law is the transgression or the breaking i mean sin is the transgression or the breaking of the law so if christ paid it all and the law was no longer in effect, then that would mean that we can no longer sin. But all of sin, then they'll fall short of the glory of God. If someone says that they that they don't sin, then they're what? A liar. That's all scriptural, okay? So it is your job to read the word of God and allow the Holy Ghost to lead you into all truth to live this lifestyle, Okay, so you got to keep the word of God. You got to keep his commandments. Your obedience is going to play a part. Number three, you got to close doors. What I am noticing that is going on is a lot of folks, you're dealing with the symptoms. Lord, heal my body of cancer. Lord, restore my marriage. You're, you're dealing with the symptom, but you're not getting the root. Okay, so it looks like the issue is resolved. You didn't pray and fast for three months and now everything is getting better. But then all of a sudden, six months later, you're back in the same situation. The cancer came back. The marriage is still in turmoil. Why? Because you didn't deal with the root. You didn't close the door. It was still given permission to bear fruit in newer seasons. I need y'all to hear me. So y'all have to do the Full work. Y'all can't just stop short and cut off the fruit. You have to deal with the root of the matter. And that's going to be uncomfortable because 10 times out of 10, it's going to cause you to look in the mirror and confront yourself. And a lot of folks don't want to have to do that kind of work. They just want the band-aid fixed. They, they, they just want that thing that's going to hurt the least. And that's not going to bring you complete, total, and permanent healing. Okay? And restoration. Number three, look at your circle. Look at your circle. Like, is auntie a witch? Is auntie the one praying against your marriage or praying that you don't get married? Is it, uh, is your best friend into stuff that you know that they're into? Guilty by association. I need y'all to stop thinking that just because you don't do it, but you're attached to others who do, that you're going to get away scot-free. There is a spiritual principle. How can two walk hand in hand lest they agree? So if you are besties with a known witch or a warlock, don't think that that residue is not going to rub off. That calamity is not going to come into your area or vicinity. So you got to check your circle. What's going on in your circle? Are the people that you call friends really your friends? Are they really? Are they really... Hold on. Sorry got phone call are they do they really have your back or are they the ones who are praying p-r-e-y-i-n-g against you check your circle number two what have you bought did you go to the thrift store did you go to a regular store and purchase something that was an idol you got buddha sitting up in your home talking about you got zen and peace you got the yin yang on your clothes 
What have you purchased that is connected in an open door for the kingdom of darkness that is welcoming witchcraft into your life? A lot of these pro uh, products, like liquid death and stuff, it is known that there are witches that they actually bring in to pray curses over these things. There have been articles, there have been interviews, so on and so forth. There's no way around it. If you really want to find the information, you have access to the World Wide Web to do it. So I'm just saying, do a house check. What did you bring in? Do you have a crystal that someone gave you? And unbeknownst to you, it was housing a spirit. Did you go and somebody gave you their pair of shoes? And ever since you've been wearing their shoes, the whole, your whole path and direction has been off track. Uh-oh. Did somebody give you money? Say, I want to give in to you. And you received it, but the money was cursed. And ever since you took that money, your pockets have had holes in them. Uh-oh. Did you give somebody money? And every time and every since then, it looks like as soon as you get money, it's gone. That's witchcraft. You have to do a full evaluation. There are so many factors for you to take into consideration. And then once the Holy Spirit shows you what it is, you have to repent. Okay? And stop doing it. Get rid of whatever it is. Turn. Repentance is a lifestyle change. Okay? Repentance means I'm not going to do that again. And completely turn from that thing. If you have an idol, burn it. Don't just throw it in the trash. Don't give it to somebody else. Burn it up, okay? And not just with all the goes fire. Put some real fire up on that, too. Um, renounce and denounce all connections, covenants, contracts. Divorce yourself from all spirits that may have been um, associated with whatever it was. And then, as the Holy Spirit gives you more for your strategy, you may have to fast, and the thing that I'm noticing, too, is that some of y'all like to just fast for three days and think that, oh, you good. You fasting for three days for something that's been on your bloodline for 3,000 years. No, some of it's going to be a process. Some of this you're going to have to fight for this freedom. Those ancient spirits don't want to let y'all go. Those those bloodline generational spirits, they don't want to have to come up off the bloodline. They're used to being there. They're comfortable. So you're literally waging war for your bloodline, waging war for your freedom. Well, B, well, you know, whom the sun sets free is free indeed. Yeah, that's for those who will fully accept the work of Christ. Really look at your life. Because if you fully accept the work of Christ, your faith would be in a different place. Your life will be in a different place. Even for B dot, let's be real. There are aspects that God is still showing me that I need to grow up in in my relationship. There are aspects that he's still showing me that you don't have enough faith over here. Because if you had faith, you would be moving different. None of us are perfect. But if we're expecting the totality of the covenant, then we need to come into the totality of the commitment that we made. Uh-oh. Think about that. You want God to deliver in full every time, but you don't deliver in full. He told you to get up at 2 o'clock for 2 o'clock a.m. for a whole week straight, and you just rolled over. But as soon as you get afflicted by something, you want him to move instantly. It don't work like that. It doesn't. And what relationship do you see that it's just a tick, 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 tick? This is a give and take, and unless you know the full terms of the covenant, you're going to find yourself in a position where you are um, dealing with things like witchcraft attacks, and it's going to take more out of you. You're going to have to pin in a bit more in order for the move or the manifestation that you're seeking for. And it's not because of God, it's because of you. Because we like to blame God for everything. <laughs> And 10 times out of 10, it's literally something that we didn't do. It's literally something that we didn't do. Now, if you have been dealing with certain things from a child, you need to begin to seek the father and he'll he'll do it to show you who didn't did it. Was a mama? Was a daddy? What side of the family was it on? 
If you are out here and you're having dreams and all of a sudden you're thrust back into great grandma's house or, or grandma's house on your mama's side, then more than likely God is showing you that on your mother's side, whatever is happening in the context of the dream, that's where it's springing from. If you are all of a sudden in your daddy's house and, you know, you, with your with your daddy's brother, your uncle, whatever, God is showing you the direction that it's coming from. God is showing you what it's springing from. If you know, and I want y'all to hear me real clear on this. If you know that there was someone on your family, whether your father, your grandfather, whoever, that they were a mason and you're having issues in your marriage or you having a problem getting married, then I'm telling you now, your name is in that contract. Because in order to reach the higher levels, especially for the men uh, in Freemasonry, it, it normally comes at the cost of your daughters or your bloodline, their marriages or their ability to get married. So then there's deliverance that has to that has to be done in order for those covenants to be broken and those spirits um, that are associated with uh, getting in the middle of your progression in those areas to be removed. Now, for those who don't believe in all that kind of stuff, then guess what? Keep living life like you're living it, okay? Just don't come complain to me. But for those who understand and can grasp what the Father is revealing on today, I'm telling you right now, a lot of you under the sound of my voice and who will watch this replay, you're under a witchcraft attack. There is a literal witch assigned with your name in their mouth to pray against you. So what you going to do about it? What you going to do about it? Are you going to keep sleeping on it and just say, well, maybe this is the life that God has called me to live, which isn't. Or are you going to allow the Holy Spirit to develop a strategy for you to come out and to finally break through and be free? I'm just on here saying, go scroll through the symptoms, go scroll through the posts and um, see if anything lines up with what you got going on. And if it does... I'm going to encourage you to connect with someone who is safe, safe for real. Not these these um, folks who just doing this for fake, okay? And to properly discern. And God will send you spiritual advisors to assist you in developing strategy. If, if you've watched TPR for any length of time, if you've seen any of our posts, we're literally giving out keys. There's only but so many keys we can give out in public. Let's just be real with that because it's not for everybody. But behind the scenes, we're literally giving out the secrets of the heaven. We are. And if you will follow the strategy and follow the rules, you, you will see breakthrough. And there are many who are seeing breakthrough in their lives. So it's really up to you. Do you want to stay bound? Do you want to always feel like that they want up in you? Or are you really trying to break through for real, for real? Because these witches out here, they're not playing games. And I'm not glorifying witches. I'm not glorifying the kingdom of darkness. I'm just telling you what's going on in your life and what's really happening. Because uh, they already got the world on lock. What do I mean? Every show, in some way, shape, form, or fashion, has witchcraft in it. Whether it's the tarot cards, or it's the witch in the episode, or whatever. Almost every book in the library, it's hard for me to find a book for my daughter, has some form of witchcraft and magic in it. Okay, They are training up their children in the way that they want them to go. Okay, And they're trying to train up yours too. So if you think that witchcraft and magic and all that stuff is not real, well, God bless you. Keep it moving. Because it is to the point where Harry Potter, um, they ban Harry Potter books out of school libraries because they are uh, not in the United States and overseas because they have actual spells within the book. But yet they got our children. They got us over here repeating stuff out of the movie. You didn't even realize that you were repeating a spell and participating in a witchcraft ritual. It's that deep. And if you are in the kingdom and you want this latter half of your life to be different than the beginning of your life, you want to do something different. And part of that's going to be you want to wake up. You want to wake up and realize everybody isn't for you. And the same way you got an assignment in the kingdom of God, 
the kingdom of darkness has assigned somebody to you because whether you realize your power or what you have access to or not, they do. And the goal is to take you out. There are too many people out here dying prematurely. There are too many people out here dying prematurely. There are too many people out here living a life way beneath that which God has called them to. There are too many people out here who are not living in the fullness of what God has placed in them. Uh huh. And whether it started with a word curse from your mama and your daddy telling you what you was never going to be, or from that teacher in your school who said that you were dumb and that you were never going to make it to wherever you are now. It could have been that bad relationship where they made you feel less than and you still have not bounced back from it. It's still an attack on your destiny. It's still an attack on your destiny. And there are ways that you can break through it through Christ Jesus and your relationship with God. Outside of Christ, you don't have no hope. Outside of Christ, you can keep going to the witch doctors and asking them to help you. They're just going to keep transferring different demons. That's all they do. They just transfer different demons. So, you know, you may be dealing with one. By the time you leave, you're dealing with five. And the one might go to sleep for a season and wake back up again in another season. Okay? So, they're real tricky and crafty to keep you bound. But we want to see you free over here at the Prophetic Remnant. So, hopefully, this life has helped you. I have to go. Check out the post. God bless you and have a good day.